Phillies and Fillers, Brad the Fixologist here. I have a LED light. This is one of those really bright ones. Uh, I found these, I think one year at, maybe it was Ollie's, which is like an, uh, like an outlet kind of a place. They tend to sell kind of discounted goods. It's labeled iTech Folding LED Light Bulb. Uh, model 2FLLB-12 slash 1956. It has just quit, and to confirm that really quickly, we'll plug it into one of our lights here. I did not check the breaker, so I'm going to be look stupid if this is a breaker issue. It's not, so we've got nothing here. So, like I said, nobody home here with this thing. Uh, we're going to open it up and try to determine what the problem is, and if it's something we can fix, we'll go ahead and just fix it. I don't hold out a great deal of hope, but maybe this will tell us whether or not this style of LED light is fixable. I actually bought two of these at the time I got it. It was this one and another one that's been hanging in my garage for a long time, and it still works. But these are good for that kind of application, like, you know, basements, anywhere where it's kind of, it tends to be a little bit dark, you know, uh, not very well lit, and you only have one socket for a light. Uh, this is a good choice, this kind of style, because the way it fans out, it has the surface area for a bunch of LEDs. But the problem is, you know, they tend to generate a lot of heat, as you can imagine. Let's see. All right, we have to sever this. Or, or peel the sticker. Okay, so that comes off, and then we've got everything is really accessible. That's kind of what I thought I would see. I, th I thought I would see a situation where everything was really accessible. That's why I like this uh, design, actually. How do I want to go about this? I think I want to test the LEDs first and see if we get anything at all. I'm going to fire up my DC power supply here and just give the LEDs a little bit of power. I think this is a case of burned out LEDs because we've got nothing lighting up at all. I would have thought we would have gotten something. Yeah, these lights aren't lighting up at all. So we have a bad LED strip on one of these. I wonder if we can get into these individually. We can actually. There is a little clip right here that separates the two pieces. It should be fairly easy. Ooh. Oh, okay. I see what the problem is. There's a uh, there's little clips on the sides here. We gotta we'll have to run something up under here. Need something a little tougher than my fingernail. Use a painter's knife on the edge. All right, so here's this array. Let's see if we can make this array light up at all. Yeah, straight up nothing. All right, I'm gonna go through these one at a time on the individual LEDs on this board because there is a bad LED somewhere on this board, I believe. If you have a digital multimeter, uh, chances are pretty good that you can do these tests with just a digital multimeter on these LEDs. Okay, we can put this in diode mode. Let's see. Okay, there we got those three lit up. So there's a little bit of voltage that comes out of these digital multimeters when you uh, test. So we've got three good ones right there we know those are good those three are good those three are good these three are good 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 
Uh, those three are good. And the final three? Oh, wow. Okay, so all those are good. So maybe I'm missing something. What am I missing here? Okay, so what I'm noticing right off is that we have a bad capacitor. We have a bad capacitor on this board right here. You can see that it is bulged out on the top. There are some score lines, and those are split, actually, even in the middle right there. So this, this is a blown capacitor. We need to change that. I'm not surprised to see a blown capacitor. It's pretty common. Um, I just wonder if when the capacitor blew, if it took out maybe something else in the process. But I'd say let's change that capacitor and then we can uh, assess further. I want to try to do this without taking that little board out of there because I think it would be easier. Okay, I got that capacitor out of there that was exploded so we can replace it. It's a 10 microfarad at 400 volts and we'll get it in there. Let's see if we got a replacement. I'm pretty sure I should have. Okay, I don't have exactly that but I do have a 10 microfarad at 450 volts and this will be good enough to try. Hopefully this one fits even. Is this even going to fit? Okay. It fits barely. <laughs> At least I think it's going to fit. Once we get all the pieces back together, hopefully it'll fit. Okay. Well, let's see what we get now. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. All right, let's flip the switch. Three, two, one. Nothing. Okay. So obviously we have bigger problems than just the bad, the obviously bad capacitor. Okay, we've got this thing under the microscope here. We can see what the problem is. This chip is definitely burned. Uh, this light, I believe, was left on too long, and that has burned this chip. You can see a hole in it right here, in fact. Uh, this resistor over here, this one might, these might have suffered as well as a result. But this is definitely our problem. And the part number, it looks like it's BP2861Z6PN03 down there at the bottom. Let's see if we can find this part. BP2861. All right, so if we do a search for the BP2861, uh, we get returns that tell us this is a uh, non-isolated step-down LED constant current driver chip. Uh, by non-isolated, it means this is uh, this is full wall voltage. So, and this has a large range of voltages that it will operate at. Okay, a lot of this is in Chinese. Well, some of it's in Chinese, not all of it. You know what? Uh, these days, instead of searching the internet, sometimes it's just easier to use um, to use an AI chat. Okay, yeah, if we just ask a question of, of AI, usually it'll give you better answers. Um, the the BP2861 chips, non-isolated, step-down buck, constant current, LED driver. So, yeah, essentially this thing will work f um, from 8 from around 85 to 265 volts AC. So you don't even have to necessarily to have any kind of rectifier in the circuit uh, to use this chip. You could, it could use full AC voltage. So that's what it's saying here. So I'm assuming it might just be a AC. At any rate, this is the chip that we would need. And if we wanted to procure one of these, it looks like you can... They're not easy to find. Uh, I would have thought they might be a little easier than this. Okay, this is the same part number right here, and it is the same form factor and everything. SOP7 is the package type. And this is all in, like, Spanish for some reason. I'm not sure why this is in Spanish. Looks like you can get 10 of them for $7.45. 
So not expensive. And if I wanted to, I could order one of these and fix this little light bulb, but it's not it's not really worth it to me. I just wanted to see what the failure was and get a little idea of uh, what failures of this type might be in the future and whether it's worth it. You know, the idea uh, was trying to see whether it was going to be worth it to fix this kind of lamp in the future. But uh, with this sort of problem, it's probably not. Particularly now that when you've got uh, tariffs and stuff. And with this particular chip, it looks like I'm going to have to order it direct from China. So I'm, it's just not worth it to order the parts and wait for them and fix this little light. But anyway, that will do it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, we, Although we didn't get the item working, we know what the problem was. And if we wanted to fix it, we probably could fix it just by ordering this one little chip. Um, but usually that's what it is, man. In these lights, it's not always the LED. Sometimes it is the LED strips, um, but a lot of times it's not. It's other things. And uh, this is one of those cases where it was just something else had burned up. Now, it could also be the case that some of the LEDs that I did not test uh, were also burned out. But I don't think that's the case. I think what happened was that uh, a step-down converter chip failed on us and that's the pretty much uh what happened there it might have been that the capacitor failed first and then uh caused some you know dirty kind of unfiltered noisy uh, power that was coming in that's possible that that caused it i'm not really sure what which came first the chicken or the egg here but one of those components failed and uh, took out the other with it and yeah man it's probably you know i mean a dollar to fix it but I don't think I gave more than a couple, maybe $3 for the whole light. So, you know, I don't know. It's a throwaway society. What can I say? Uh, some things just aren't really necessarily worth fixing. I will keep the parts of, of this around, though. Maybe uh, in the future, uh, like I said, I do have another one of those. And maybe something else will fail in the future on the other one. And we'll use parts out of this one to fix that one. So that'll do it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed. For now, we'll see you all later.